Hello, I'm Dr. Joel O'Brien from Ball State University. In this video, I'll show you how you and your students can replicate one of the greatest discoveries and inventions of all time, the voltaic pilot. In the late 1700s, Italian scientist Luigi Galvani was operating on frog legs. Through chance, he discovered that the frog leg muscle could contract whenever he connected certain tissue. Galvani attributed this to animal electricity, in which he believed that all animals could store electricity just like a Leyden jar could store electrical charge. Another Italian scientist, Alexander Volta, read about Galvani's work but disagreed that there was any such thing as animal electricity. Through Volta's own experiments, he discovered that whenever two dissimilar metals were connected to the same conducting solution, a continuous current could be produced. This became the first electrochemical cell. Later, Volta discovered that if multiple cells are connected together or stacked in a pile, you could produce even more current, and this became known as the voltaic pile, which is essentially the first electrochemical battery. It's very easy for your students to replicate the electrochemical cell in the voltaic pile using simple, inexpensive materials. The two metals we'll use are copper and zinc. You can get copper discs by just simply using copper pennies. Even though the penny is not solid copper, the copper coating on the outside is sufficient for this to work. For zinc, one good way to get zinc discs is to buy galvanized electrical boxes. This single box, which was purchased at a local home improvement store for only 74 cents, supplies 17 of these quarter size zinc discs. For our conducting solution, I'm going to use thick cardstock soaked in salt water. I put the cardstock in the salt water. I take one zinc disc. On top of my zinc disc, I will put my salt water soaked cardstock. I place a penny on top of that, and with a voltmeter, I can connect the negative lead of the voltmeter to the zinc and the positive lead to the copper penny, and I find that I'm getting a potential difference or voltage of 0.65 volts. Volta didn't stop there, however. He found that if you pile these on top of each other, multiple cells stacked on top of each other, you can produce even more current. I'll now go ahead and soak all of my pieces of cardstock in the salt water. While the cardstock is getting nice and wet, I will set up these wooden rods to hold the voltaic pile in place to keep it from falling off. I'm going to put the negative post of my voltmeter in, embedded into some modeling clay, and then I'm going to stick four wooden dowel rods into the modeling clay to help support the voltaic pile. Alexander Volta used glass generally in his voltaic piles, but wood or any other insulator will do fine. I'm going to take the cardstock out of the salt water and let it sit on this paper towel so that it kind of drips, dries but it will stay moist and will still be sufficient to work. If you have salt water dripping over the sides from one cell to another, it's likely that sometimes the voltage will essentially short out and not add up as we would expect. All we have to do now is start making zinc, cardstock, copper, electrochemical cells and begin stacking them on top of each other. So I place a piece of salt water soaked cardboard, cardstock, onto my zinc disc, a piece of copper on top of that, and I read a potential of 0.64 volts. I start making more of these cells and pile them on top of each other, where the zinc of one cell is always in contact with the copper of another. 
This essentially is connecting our electrochemical cells, the positive of one copper cell, to the negative, the zinc, of another cell. Now I have four plus the one that's already there. I have a pile of five electrochemical cells, and I'm getting over three volts, 3.40 volts. We're now reaching over six volts. We're now getting over nine volts. In order to power or light an LED, I need to connect the long lead of the LED, which is the positive, to the positive of my electrochemical battery, which is the copper. The negative lead from the LED will be connected to the zinc at the bottom of the voltaic pile. And you should see that as I connect the positive lead to the copper penny, the light bulb does light and flash. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Your students will certainly enjoy watching physics history come alive when they make the voltaic pile. Visit arborside.com for more information about the voltaic pile and for many other activities that you can do with your students.